Today's guest is Jeff Parker, who actually took the University of Colorado version of the course that you guys are taking right now in, we were just trying to figure that out, 2002. And he did this really cool final project in my class that then turned into his thesis, um, or part of his thesis. And then he went off and took that to uh, the Jet Propulsion Labs, and now he's back here as a professor. And so he's going to tell us about this really cool idea that uses stable and unstable manifolds to get spacecraft from one orbit to the other for cheap or for free. Okay, well thank you Liz very much. Um, and one thing I wanted to point out was that all that work that went into the, the dissertation and whatnot, it was a lot of work, but it actually turned into a book. This was published at the Jet Propulsion Lab and this was the research that came largely right out of this class. Um, I applied this work to trajectory design for missions to the moon and I've seen it happen where at least two spacecraft have flown such tra trajectories at the moon which is very exciting. So, so the idea behind the spacecraft trajectory design is that there are special points in space where are, they're very interesting. So for instance between the earth and the moon there's a point where the gravity balances. You can imagine if you're closer to the earth you fall towards the earth, if you're closer to the moon you fall towards the moon and there's centripetal acceleration too but, the, but, but, the, but you can imagine that point is unstable, that if the spacecraft is placed there perfectly, it'll stay there forever, but any sort of nudge and it'll fall off one way or another. Is that like the inverted point of a pendulum, kind of? Yes, indeed. Okay. Indeed. Um, and, and you can actually build an entire orbit around it, so it's not just a point, but you can put an orbit around that point, just carefully designed so that the spacecraft just drifts back and forth around that gravitational balance point. Um, and then we can use the principles of of the, the class manifolds to build trajectories that are particularly useful for spacecraft. Okay, um, so here are some slides that we put together to describe um, these orbits that we were referring to and their stable and unstable manifolds. So now just to give you a little bit of reference, um, we call these orbits halo orbits. So what I'm showing is, uh, yeah, right here, this is the moon. Off to the left is the Earth. So the Earth you can't see, it's over here. Earth, moon. This is a, a, a gravitational point on the far side of the moon, and this is one of those orbits I was telling you about. Um, and then the green trajectories are trajectories that you can take to get onto the orbit. They're stable. They're trajectories in the stable manifold. And then the red trajectories down here are trajectories that you would take if you were perturbed off of the orbit. So I placed 10 satellites in this halo orbit and perturbed them all just a little bit and let them all fall off of that orbit. And you can see they each take a different trajectory off of the orbit, and we'll watch it again. These are three-dimensional orbits, so the one on the left is viewed from above, the one on the top right is viewed from a side, and you can see the trajectories, you can see the spacecraft fall off of this orbit on their own trajectory in this orbit, and it traces out a tube, and this tube-like structure is the unstable manifold of the, that orbit. Of and you can see that these all fall off away from the Earth and the Moon, but you could also fall off towards the Earth and the Moon. So this is only one half of, of the manifold. Likewise, if you place spacecraft just right, they will follow their own trajectories and land onto the orbit asymptotically um, along their stable manifold. These are built by propagating time backwards. So you actually take the orbit, you find their stable uh, manifold directions propagate them backwards in time but the spacecraft would then traverse them forwards in time and then they would land onto the orbit without executing any sort of maneuver. So this is a spacecraft trajectory that lands on an orbit, doesn't have to do an orbit insertion maneuver, it just it slides into the orbit for free. So that would be kind of like pushing the pendulum exactly right so right. it landed pointing upright and didn't move. That's right. So it sounds like you would have to be very careful with your initial condition to do that. That's how, right. How do you find these orbits, these <clears throat> manifolds? There's a couple of things about that. First of all, now with the pendulum notion, if you were to take that pendulum and perturb it just a little bit and allowed it to fall backwards and then ran time backwards, you'd, you'd know exactly what state you needed to get onto. So we know what states we need to get onto, we find those states by looking at these, these, this orbit, and at each point along the orbit, we take the dynamics, and from linear algebra, we compute the eigenvalues and eigenvectors of the Jacobian, of the dynamics of that orbit. 
uh, the eigenvectors tell you the direction of stable motion and unstable motion. So basically what's dynamically downhill or dynamically uphill in the state space. You could think about that. That's right. That's right. Okay. Perfect. Yeah. Okay. So a great example for real mission design, real spacecraft mission design in the Earth-Moon system is the, this, this kind of example where let's say you have um, a, an orbit about the L1 point. The L1 point is between the Earth and the Moon. So the Earth is off to the left. The moon is here. This is the moon's orbit. It's kind of hard to see, but um, so this is this is on the Earth side of the moon. And if you start with a with an orbit um, around that point, the, all these red trajectories are example trajectories in the unstable manifold of that orbit. A spacecraft could take any of these trajectories off of that orbit virtually for free. And if it wanted to go to an orbit about the far side of the moon, this is about the L2 point then it could get onto any of these green trajectories and land onto that orbit for no fuel. Right on the right side here, there are two intersection points where there's no kink, that the trajectory departs the first orbit and lands onto the second orbit without executing any sort of maneuver. And we would call this a low energy or free transfer for a spacecraft to, to traverse from an L1 orbit to an L2 orbit. And here's a an animation showcasing that. I put three satellites in orbit about L1 and three satellites in orbit about L2. And let's say you have astronauts that want to land on the far side of the moon. Perhaps it's of interest to move a couple of those assets over to the far side of the moon and take these free transfers, no fuel necessary, to, to send them over to the far side of the moon, support the mission, and then send them back again at the end of the mission. So what are the two panels in this figure? I understand the left oh, one is physical space. What's point. the right one? Actually, the left one is viewed in the rotating frame. The right one is viewed in the inertial frame. Oh, I see. And what I mean by that is on the right, you have the Earth. The moon is in orbit about the Earth. And these spacecraft are either on the near side or the far side of the moon in these interesting exotic orbits. And over here, the moon is stationary because it's in a rotating frame, and the frame is rotating with the motion of the moon. So thank you, Jeff, for that introduction to one of the interesting applications of dynamical systems theory to spacecraft orbit design. You're absolutely welcome. Um, by all means, contact me with questions. Okay.